Let's talk about the secret life of Barbara Bush. It's revealed in a brand new biography called The Matriarch, Barbara Bush and the Making of an American Dynasty. Author Susan Page spent time with the former first lady during the final months of her life. And in the book, she writes about uh, Mrs. Bush's battle with depression and a never ending feud if you did not know, with fellow First Lady Nancy Reagan. Susan Page is with us now. Susan, thank you so much. We appreciate you thank taking you. time for us here. Great to be with you. Absolutely. I know that you interviewed her, you know, in those last few weeks. What, what about your time with her? What did you learn about her that surprised you most? What stuck with you most, do you think? You know, here's, here's something that surprised me in the course of, of doing this biography, and that was the defining role that the death of her daughter Robin at the age of three from leukemia, the effect that had on the rest of her life when she talked about issues, uh, considered issues like abortion rights. So she thought about the issue of AIDS, which was then a burgeoning crisis when her husband became president. Her experiences with Robin and with Robin's leukemia really shaped her views on those things. It was really, it was something that made her, her harder. It gave her an armor about things because the worst thing that could happen to her had already happened. And it made her more vulnerable and empathetic with other people as well. Mm, my goodness. Um, what was her demeanor? You know, what was her mindset in those last few weeks? Because you had tremendous access to her at the end of the day. You know, I interviewed her five times in five months. And at each time her health, her physical health was worse. She was clearly in decline, but her mental health was excellent. She had an incredible memory for things. And when later, when she gave me access to her diaries and I would go back and check things that she had told me in interviews that had happened decades earlier, her diaries would say exactly the same thing, even down to the words, the exchanges she had with people at key moments, including with Nancy Reagan. So this was a woman who was sharp as a tack to the end, even as she was struggling physically. So she gave you access to the diaries because that's, that is pretty exquisite that you, you were able to get access to those diaries. You know what's amazing? The first time I interviewed her, she said, do not even ask me about my diaries. You will never see them. And the last time I interviewed her, the fifth time, at the end of that interview, she said, I've decided you can see them all. And wow. I have to say, I had the worst possible journalist reaction. I said, are you sure? <laughs> Don't ask, you know, I was asking. You, Don't you give him do a that? second chance to say no. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but she did give me access to her diary, something that only historian John Meacham had also seen, uh, the only other yeah. outsider to be able to see them. So what an, what an extraordinary gift that was. So you write about this war that I think a lot of people didn't know about between uh, Barbara Bush and Nancy Reagan. Um, what, what started that? Well, they, you know what I think started that was the 1980 Republican campaign where the, their two husbands ran against each other for the Republican nomination. And there were wounds uh, that uh, I think ne never healed for Nancy Reagan from some of the combat in those Republican primaries. That was the start of it. But they also were just so different as, as they had such different characters and personalities and, and priorities. Even though they were very close in age, they both went to Smith College. They had a lot of similarities, but they just had a friction that was remarkable. Barbara Bush spent about a decade biting her tongue uh, when Nancy Reagan was first lady and she was second lady, and even after she went into the White House. But they had an explosive exchange a few days after the Bushes moved out of the White House. Nancy Reagan called her to explain away yet another interview uh, where she had said some negative things about the Bushes. And Barbara Bush said to her, I'm tired of you explaining things to me. Don't ever call me again. And then she basically hung up and the two women never had an extended conversation wow. again. That is something else. Speaking of first ladies, <clears throat> I want to read a little bit of what she wrote uh, to now first lady Melania Trump. She wrote, Dear Mrs. Trump, the world thought I was writing this note to Bill Clinton. I am glad that I am not. I wanted to welcome you to the First Lady's very exclusive club. My children were older and therefore I did not have the problems you do. Whatever you decide to do is your business and yours alone. Living in the White House is a joy and their only job is to make you happy. If you decide to stay in New York City, that will be fine also. When you come to the White House, let your son bring a friend. That is my unasked for advice. God bless you, Barbara Bush. There are a couple of things to unpack there. First of all, let's talk about how she really felt about Bill Clinton. <laughs> talk so, about that. So, 
you know, Bill Clinton had become a friend of George H.W. Bush's, uh, and Barbara Bush was harder to win over, I would say, uh, than George H.W. Bush was. But she liked the fact that he paid attention to her husband, and she liked the fact that her husband liked to spend time with him. And he, Bill Clinton would come up to Kenny Bunkport every summer and see them, and I think she liked that. But she had a gimlet-eyed view of people, including of Bill Clinton. Because she was so protective of her family. That, that's Partly, right. right, and because he, he cheated at golf, and that was, a, <laughs> that, that was a, something she thought was really a serious character flaw. She, he cheated at golf. <laughs> All right. Um, did you learn what she thought of, of the First Lady currently, of Melania Trump, and that really that sage advice that she gave her about she was clearly concerned about Barron. You know, it's, it's interesting. She had never met Melania Trump. Uh, she wrote this letter uh, soon after the election. She had drafted a different letter to send to Bill Clinton saying, welcome to the First Ladies Club. We can't wait to inaugurate you. Uh, she never, of course, sent that letter because to her surprise and the surprise of a lot of people in that election, Bill Clinton uh, was not going to become the first spouse because uh, Donald Trump won. So she wrote this letter to Melania. And interestingly, she gave the same advice to Melania Trump that she had given to Hillary Clinton years earlier, which was, you're moving into the White House, you have a single child, uh, maybe they'll be lonely, it's hard to be in the White House and grow up there. Think about letting them have a friend come and live with you. Such important advice from one mom to another. You know, two moms obviously there who, who put their kids first and foremost, and you can see that in that letter. Um, lastly, I, I wanted to ask you if you had conversations with her about what she hoped um, might be after she was gone? You know, she worried about the direction of the country. Uh, she had been the face of the Republican Party for decades. She told me she no longer considered herself a Republican. She was dismayed by our politics, how angry they've gotten, how divisive, how people don't give the benefit of the doubt to people on the other side or see them as people as honest and worthy of respect. And she was so anxious about that that she had what she called a heart attack because of that anxiety. And her son Jeb called her and said, you can't worry about it. We're a strong country. We're going to come through things. And then she said, I tried to take Jeb's advice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, she said, he's right. Just do good. Make life better for someone else. Pretty that was what she Susan tried to Page. do for sure. Yeah. Susan Page, thank you so much. We appreciate you being here. Thank you, Christy. Absolutely. And the matriarch, Barbara Bush and the Making of an American Dynasty is out now.